So one day God looked down over all the creation, over all the men, women and children, and he said, Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche. So I tell you a funny thing. Um, Israelites. Israelites. So I always thought it was interesting in the Bible, reading about the story and history of other peoples. Israelites. And they weren't really a nation of people, you know, they were these wandering hobos that lived in a kind of um, in a, in a covenant with God, which uh, was very difficult to maintain here on, on earth, and they'd fall in and out of it. What I've discovered is very interestingly from Ahab and Jezebel when uh, Elijah showed up on the scene, that there was a Jewish king, but he was murdering Israelites by accident. He was, wasn't killing his family, but he was killing Israelites. And we have this uh, delusion in the Torah or Bible going through. I'm not sure. I must have had to stop with Jesus, but I'd say this Jewish people out there to probably claim to still be it. That the family of Israel, Jacob became Israel. Jacob's name turned into Israel. And Israel is gypsy, Egyptian. It's uh, Isis, Ra and El. Mother, son under God. Now we have a lot of trinities with Father, Son and Holy Spirit and all. But I'm pretty sure Isis, Ra El remains to a good mother, good son kind of thing. And under God, under the scriptures, on some, some land. Now, once upon a time, God saw it fit that the West Bank, maybe, in um, the Middle East was considered the land of uh, suitable for Israel. I said before, America make a uh, society is very really, uh, cliche and Christian and very, you know, 4.2 children, and they do it on purpose for to make a pot, like a potting bed, where ready to receive, waiting and ready to receive, um, a, a child of God. So the reason you make really uh, cliche Christian uh, societies and kind of things in America was anyway to be welcoming and receive special kids, Cabane or some kids, kids with stars, and then they just exploit them and tear them apart anyway. Um, and because all these nations are now being ruled by some kind of dragon-like anti-prophet, it spoils it all. And no special kids are born in America because they're just going to be consumed the instant they're born by the dragon. Is in Revelation, so the dragon is kind of like this name that's generally given by John to like all the kind of shadowy things that you have given a name to which don't have a name, like the Zatan or Lucifer or the devil. And it's this uh, like driving, desperate force that consumes the mind of men. And um, just so it happens to turn out that when I showed up in life, that the world is saturated with worshipping it, worshipping this dragon. So I've had a lot to overturn and a lot to fucking fight because I've had presidents, politicians. You know, gangsters, everyone, absolutely everyone, religions, churches, and they're all convinced about their satanic creeds and all this. And I've had to blow it all out of the water as best I can. It's going well, though. It's, it's, it's a jihad, you know. It's a jihad of overcoming everything. I've realized that it's resolve that fixes these families, and it's resolve that fixes the history of these families. And Jesus must have done something. See, Jesus became Israel. That's what I'm saying. Jesus became the king of the Israelites. Jesus became king, the king of, yeah. Of, uh, yeah, such people. His family then, the archetypical f features of the 12 families of Jacob, 14, 12 descending families of Jacob were seen, not mimic, seen in the 12 apostles of the Last Supper. He gave it onto his 12. So there's a saying in uh, Revelations where he said there'll be uh, 14,000 and 4,000. 14, people um at the end of time now this is not a, a figure or a fact this is a military calling if i was king of israel i would send say bring me twelve thousand from every one of our tribes and it's an effort it's a will nobody could show up you know what i mean nobody might like you know uh, for a military calling of a king it might get like a handful of people jesus conveniently had 12 um, and they all got killed uh, crucified, tortured, and this caused an apocalypse straight away because Israel was reborn and the monster tried to consume it instantly before it started and it consumed and it killed them all. Like it, it tried to, uh, and it caused apocalypse, like because it instantly killed the Israeli family, which was then Jesus and his 12 apostles and his loved ones, people who would have been invited to his wedding supper. Um, uh, so this has happened a few times now. And that's what I realized. That's why I said Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche and I made the Elvis reference because God has looked down on this world a lot during the period of Christianity. Not just this doesn't have anything to do with being Jewish, Israel. 
because I used to study what it was to be an Israelite and so I used to look at modern day Judaism and I was like, you know, they have an army, you know, they have money and commerce, they do things, they uh, they like American culture a lot, they even say this, you know, the Shazad them and, the, you know, but um, I never really thought them to be very Israeli, like they're very good teachers and they're very, uh, like listening to, you know, old Jewish men talk, if you listen to old Jewish men and rabbis talk for all day for all they care. But I realised that it is not eternally meant to be held Israel and that's been the problem and you see this problem a lot in the Bible that they were so conservative about who Israel were and these bloodlines, unnecessary bloodlines, nothing to do with bloodlines of these 14 families and they accidentally kill the newborn Israelites. So when Israel is refigured and replaced, they accidentally cut them all, chop off all their heads and kill them and this causes apocalypse because they're convinced that they're still the Israeli royalty, the Mahamda. So um, uh, we see this happen in a uh, prudent and p- the purest of worlds, uh, prudent Germany, uh, you know, Prussian Germany, maybe around that period after World War Two. And it's the best Christian nation. I mean, it's like the nice purest. There's no weapons. There's no war. There's kind of none of this. They're all very loving and Christian kind of thing. And I, well, this is my opinion. Anyway, I'm convinced of this, that this happened. He was the reason for World War Two. Um, that Nietzsche got a star. Nietzsche was born a star. Nietzsche became the king of Israel. And Nietzsche sat down and didn't speak or make a move or do a word for 10 years. That's very kingly. That's very, very kingly commitment. And they came and visited him and his sister let them in and they stared at him and they took his birthright and they cheated him. I'm not going to say who because anyone could have done this. Absolutely anyone. Real royalty, privilege. I'm not saying there's anything to do with like, you know, Judaism coming out to hunt down Nietzsche or something. But they took his star and they took it to power and they took and it started causing war and it started causing a lot of Babylonian gypsy bushfire. Um, you know, people were, um, like, just like Babylon spreads and people are screaming. You don't see it, it's very secretive. And then when Germany realised it, um, they blamed it on the Jewish. Uh, there was probably a fight over it because Germany were claiming to be the new Israelites and, and the Jewish said no. There was a lot of gypsy stuff going on, a lot of Babylon, because when this instigates, the serpent um, will tell everybody how to cheat the king of Israel very quickly. So this happens instantly. This is the serpent telling Adam and Eve to eat the fruit of the tree. The fruit of the tree is actually Israel. Um, Lampstand and my uh, olive tree. Um, we're told not to eat the fruit of the tree. And these people, these families, become these lampstands, these, uh, uh, these foods of the trees, and you're not supposed to eat from them. You're not supposed to harm them. You're not supposed to exploit them. You're not supposed to take or cheat or harm, yeah, harm them specifically, you know, in any way. And, um, and, uh, so yeah, it looked like the serpent told Adam and Eve to how to exploit the tree. The king of Israel or the Israelites are told how to be exploited immediately by uh, the serpent, um, Jezebel kind of thing. And I say Jezebel because it was Miley Cyrus in my case, the instant that this occurred, Miley Cyrus was such a Luciferian committed she devil that she was teaching loads of traveler children and loads of mafias and loads of gangsters and loads of politicians how to exploit me and what to do and what time to tune in and what time and what and to say what prayer to touch wood and say a prayer and now do this and I think about his wife and it got explained to everybody except me and they completely overran me and devoured me and I've been seven years in like absolute persecution and it is persecution like I'm not going to be shy about that word I've been merciless, mercilessly persecuted and um Probably a lot of them are, you know, well, there's a lot of people, there's wrecks of people, King of Spain and all this, like, you know, he got done away for, see, this was interesting, but I said, like, they're harvesting my friends and family, they're actually hunting them and they're assassinating them, and they're crucifying someone, some of them, and the beast, or there's no beast, uh, the dragon is so strong and convicted with all the rose world and even the Pope and all that, you know. I don't think you've realised how much the dragon and the anti-prophet have crept up in society. The Pope blesses in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the blessing of 666. And it's even said in Revelations that the anti-prophet will bless you on the forehead in the name of 666. And um, will use it to protect you and you'll think he's a good person. I think the Pope said the Pope is it's okay. I think the Vatican is okay. You know, it is sincerely good. But anyway, so this happened with, uh, like I said, Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche became um, Israel. And then it probably might have happened again since then a few times because 
I heard this happen about six times since Jesus. Why didn't we record these and talk about them? Because since Jesus, there's been no reason to talk about it or debate it because we figured it out. We're supposed to have figured it out there. But from 2,000 years of the day of the Lord, from a, a New Jerusalem, basically a, t a form of New Jerusalem, which is kind of slips a bit, um, we've completely forgotten the relevancy of Christ or the revelations to, um, from Jesus Christ. And now we expect we respect his family now. And it was a blessing unto us because everywhere his mother went, the lamb was sure to go. The lamb is the king of kings, lord of lords. He leads the army of heaven against the anti-prophet. When the anti-prophet completely consumes the lamb on earth and destroys him like Jesus was, like I'm being completely consumed, I die and I'd wage war against the earth then for destroying me. And I'd probably preserve my loved ones or something like that. But... um. So yeah, this happened to me because I was the best. I was the best of the day and I figured out so much to do with Torah and so much to do with scripture. And Liam Nietzsche is my favourite author. It's not a coincidence, but I absolutely love Fred with Liam Nietzsche. And my family have now become, uh, my mother is now like something like Isis, I'm Ra, which is like some guys that kept calling me Amon Ray and these sun gods and all these names. And um, under L, raised up under the scriptures. So Ireland has something to be happy about because Ireland you know, didn't have an army. Ireland was a peaceful Christian nation, um, it was loving, it had the best peace between blood, you know what I mean, it was the best love going on and it was the least apocalyptic nation probably in the world. Um, in 88, man, that's when I was born, you know, Rizzo says back in 87 things used to be so much different. Um, I'm like Titus Grown, with the baby that was born in Titus Grown, I'm not sure what this, the book is, exactly is about. There's a lot of princes carrying out these traditions and these routines of meeting the hour. It's a sin, by the way, to meet the hour. It leads us to the road to perdition, just letting all you gypsies know. Um, to take a walk. Um, uh, Ireland has a lot to be proud about. Where we disarmed our army, like you know, it was a lot. Um, it was a lot of that kind of Israeli kind of spirit haplessly going on in Ireland. And I was born in this country to a lovely, lovely, lovely mother. My, everyone that loved my mother used to be a blessing onto my ma. Like, every, she worked in a local school and everyone's like, I love your ma so much, man. It's like, they hate going to school and then I'd see um, Miss G there and uh, she just cheered me right up and on. He'd been psychically raped, tortured um, and shared around and absolutely and utterly, um, you know, just defiled like we see in the painting where... Um, Jesus comes into the temple and there's lots of merchants and stuff going on in the temple and we see two ladies down on the ground with like someone masturbating over them and fighting over them and that's like um, Elizabeth or Mary you know like important women to Jesus's life that would have been at his uh, wedding chamber um, so yeah like I said it causes apocalypse to uh, attack these or harm this, these people and I'm being utterly consumed and destroyed and uh, tormented and your world is falling apart you're in year seven of an apocalypse because they've been tormenting and attacking and overrunning my aura for seven years so there's a few people there's a handful of people there's a <coughs> Rockefellers and Vandenbergs and America I'm going to say this it's American American Judaism there's a lot of people that claim to be Jewish and they're in America and they're not really Jewish at all because if you were Jewish you'd be in the nation of Israel at this time it's very important for them all to be going home uh, to that uh, place and that area and to clean those hills at this important time in life so if you're like you know if you were really were Jewish I think you'd be kind of back towards the nation of Israel as it's called but Israel isn't a nation that's a contradiction in itself because they're not supposed to care about land. They're not supposed to like give a shit about land at all. And you know, like you see how much modern day Israel give a shit about their hills. So it's very anti-Israeli to give a shit about property, land, money, all the things that we kind of see national uh, Israel caring about. So you know, they slipped. You know, it's a modern day world. You can't be an Israelite. Like Israelites are like travelers in a way. You know what I mean? They wander around and they don't really have a proper home. And um, if travelers did live according to a traveler code, they don't really like, you know, but, um, yeah, it's not easy to be a, a wandering shepherd, personally. But um, some little hippie kid that grew up in fields surrounded by sheep, watching the sheep and caring for the sheep, turns out to be uh, the new uh, king of Israel. So, like, hello, Israel, I am your king. And um, David in the flesh, man. And, um, yeah. America's persecuting me, everyone's persecuting me for my scarlet women, like women that they've uh, betrothed me to, um, married me to, and I've, uh, ex like, um, I've uh, executed, they've crucified some of them, they've consumed their flesh. I believe when I was in a hospital, they uh, put some food in flesh, I heard about that, that they were trying to sneak feed me human flesh. They do that a lot, actually, I heard about that, they sneak feed people human flesh, because uh, 
they commit to all sorts of abominations in America. I can get. I have to do another video on um, debauchery and um, current trends because people. Um, yeah, it was really messy when I showed up to things that they were doing. The fire was stolen from the altar, and people were really desperate when it came to be murder. And basically, they were all competing because they thought the most condemned man on the face of the earth lives forever. And they have a, a demonstrative proof for this of like the most terrible people on the earth living forever, where they're just unforgiven and they don't go anywhere. They just pollute and linger in this realm. And they were all competing to be the most worst, sadistic and twisted men. <clears throat> Maybe women as well. <coughs> Before I want to go, I'd just like to say something, actually. Muhammad Ali was in a religious group, a religious kind of group. A lot of bros. Brothers, you know, brothers keep the peace. Brothers, that's what I mean in Islam. They say brother, because that prevents apocalypse. Just being brotherly to your neighbor. Treating them with common due brotherly respect. Oh yeah, Islam. Yeah, Muhammad totally. Yeah, is was was king of Israel. I think I might have taken taken a scroll from Muhammad or Islam or something like that. But Islam totally were um, the descendants of Jesus's direct family, which is weird, you know. And um, people feel very strange and alienated and separate to Islam because it's there on a holy jihad to fix the world. If it wasn't for Islam, Christianity, I didn't exactly say in probably my other video the other day. Homer Simpson was eating donuts, and then we see in hell Homer's eating donuts to death because eating donuts were technically slightly harmful to Jesus because he was doing it very ignorantly or inconsiderately. And if you look at Christianity then, everything we do under Christ has probably been a strain. The amount of things they're doing to me and I can't I can't tell you the pain and struggle and the grief and the bodily pains and it's just been grinding, grinding, grinding torment for seven years. And it's just like since I started this new teaching, it's changed, and it's just a new torment. You know, it's just trading. It's usually trading one torment in for another. Um. Uh. Yeah, competing, doing it to death. Um. Israel. Oh, um. Islam really saved Jesus, and rid uh, saved the world, saved Jesus from being consumed. Um, by the dragon because if Jesus had been absolutely and utterly consumed by licentious Christian living and a demonstration of caring wasn't made we, we wouldn't have made it over the void I don't think um, it was Islam are very important to your current existence it was a lot done by Islam and self-sacrifice and um, welcoming anyone for to put that on my list or anyone from Islam I went to Cordoba originally looking for the caliphate when I was um, being hunted and tormented I just flew out of here and I went looking for the caliphate me a little Christian skid wearing a Kabbalah t-shirt, a Jewish t-shirt, Jewish kind of mysticism t-shirt. And uh, it didn't happen anyway in the end. I saw some nice things in Cordoba. It was a Rosy Crucian, Rosy Cross Festival. Um, but yeah, King of Israel, baby. Um, so like I said, the Machon Tach is like the, is what is known as the Israeli royal family. And uh, we see uh, the president currently sporting this uh, kind of golden plaque on his webpage saying the Mac Mac Da Mac Mac Da, like the Irish kind of version of Mac and And like, I contact the president nearly every day trying to explain this kind of situation to him and I get nothing but ignorance. They haven't even written back in all these years just saying, we've appreciated your emails, please stop writing to us. And yet he's talking about it on the radio and he's claiming to talk. It's, it's just so fucking frustrating. And the fact that he's claiming credit well, they are the gypsies that are Sinn Féin, IRA, were all educated. The Mahan family from Wexford were all educated mafia gangsters on how to exploit my wife and children and have been screwing and exploiting my wife and children for my friends and family. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, same thing. Uh, history of ex-girlfriends, you know, um, I had to lean out about I say, 12, about 12 girlfriends in my life. And there was very young when I was like, and I hardly kissed or like hugged. And, you know, these, I was a very young person when I had girlfriends. I think it's very... A very young, youthful thing, boyfriends and girlfriends. I've been celibate a decade now. Um, and I'm celibate a decade because when I realised actually myself that masturbation has had an effect on Jesus, I stopped immediately. And that might have had something big to do with it. And did you realise as well, you might think about Jesus before you, you know, have your cup of uh, tea. It might have a spoonful of honey in it. Um, <clears throat> or if I go for a smoke. <clears throat> um... So yeah, I'm a king of king and lord of lords, and uh, you need to work with me and be my friend. I'll stop exploiting me because uh, it's very weighted. The um, 
they're all drunken on the on her fornication, but you'll see the wrath of from of me from her fornication, from everyone screwing my mother and my friends and my family. And a lot of these women you see the Scarlet women in like um in paintings being depicted and she looks kinda of clueless. Like, you know, she looks kinda of silly. She doesn't know and why would she know what she's caught up in? She's not a real freak religious, enthusiastic hermit like me. And she'd have no idea. She's just being psychically contacted by Derek Rockefeller and saying that you've got a modeling contract awaiting for you and uh to come hither with uh, the uh, Antichrist. Um, so they took my orrery, they took my name, and they took my power, just like it said, it wouldn't run Revelations, the best, the beast, the sun god, Ra, Ra, Israel, and they took my power, they took my orrery, and it's going to come down to it, basically, I'm not sure if I'm going to be, it's going to be living or it's going to be dead, but you'll have to make a choice, and it said that in Revelations as well, you're going to have to choose between um, the Rockefellers, who might be distributing it, and might be um, giving my holy fortune away, and they might be very popular, and you might like them a lot because they gave you a modeling contract and they gave you um, Babylon, access to Babylon, my orrery being disregarded or disrespectfully used. And you, or, or me, the hippie, hippie king, um, who won't be offering you all too much. I'm going to seal it all up and I'm going to make sure Babylon isn't for sale or Babylon isn't used and I'm hardly going to know it or use it myself. Um, I won't be like, I'm going to stop suffering. I'm going to be using my fortune to stop suffering and I'm not going to be like, you know, super rich and I'm going to be like going around helping everyone as much as fucking possible is to stop suffering in the world and keep the peace between the brothers of Israel, like I said, or protect my family now it is, or it's still the history, I think, of Israel is important because if you're going to expect my family, you still need to respect the historical figures of people who were Israel as well. Um, it's so weird, you know, that Judaism and Germany are so, like, messed up between each other because all oh, my favourite books and poetry and authors are kind of German um, philosophers. And I'm just absolutely Hebrew mad. And through me, I kind of figure out oh, there's a great meeting place and a great time for both of these kind of cultures in me. And it's weird the way they... I imagine they used to get on very well before... <laughs> before uh, so I'd say, well, whoever country turns into Israel, I'd say a lot of Jewish people flock there and probably try to take it back. I'd say the Pope probably does this as well a lot. And um, actually the Pope sits around most of the day just like brushing people away from they walk to the top of a hill and he just walks them back down he's like you don't want to be up there I, I'm up there <laughs> but I say they come to town and they settle down and they try to locate who is exactly the Israel kid and um, but I'd say they got on you know prudent Russia or prudent Germany and you know um, the Israel or the former Israelites would say they found a nice meeting place together for some time before it all went Babylonian bushfire Um. <coughs> Uh, what am I going for here? Yeah, King of Israel. Um, yeah, you're going to have to make a choice between um, the people distributing it, royalty, like French royalty, Dutch royalty, Swiss bankers, IRA, Sinn Féin, governments, um, uh, pop stars, uh, everyone, absolutely everyone. Are, and they're, they're not going to be happy. You know, they want, they'll want to cling to it and they're not going to just want to give it away kind of thing, but they have to and give it away without a fight. You can't fight me. That's the thing. You can't fight. You can't attack me. You can't fight me. It's like King David. He was invincible on the battlefield and anyone who attacked him just died kind of thing. He couldn't get, but he was, he suffered as well. Like he was chased around and he was hunted and the more he was hunted, the more he was conceding to some monster behind him and he was almost giving the monster power by running from it. And I was looking at the Stone Cold video the other day because uh, I mentioned Stone Cold Steve Austin and I looked up the, the lyrics of the Disturbed song and it's like a, uh, Stop looking for someone to hide you. Stop running. They're living inside you. And they are well, there are millions of people in my fucking head. I'm in my already constantly having sex all day, like pumping it out just non stop all day, all night. And that's if you're just not being punished, like, you know, then they can picture horrible things to you. They can picture in their minds stuffing something in my ass, and I very much feel it. And um, they can do horrible. They can put, not transubstantiate, but they can put things in your bowels and they can put things in your stomach. And it puked horrible, horrible things, only inexplainable, inexplicable, inexplainable things. The things they've done to me over the years. But yep, yeah, I'm still standing. Um, yeah, you'll have a choice between the two. Um, oh, and you have a choice between the two. And this is one of the things that we see in the Christian Mass, because um, we confess. And while I'm here, I'm going to mention something that the Catholic Church have you confess. You're not supposed to confess. That's not a good, you're not supposed to confess that. She has nothing to do with confession. If you confess to yourself that God knows everything, that God knows your name, that's much better. Just being honest with yourself that God already knows all your iniquities, all your shames, all the things you've done and all the things you're probably going to do. If you're just, you live a different life, you live a better life. If you confess that, if you appreciate and take that on, 
Otherwise, you're living an adulterous life where you're pretending like God doesn't know behind closed doors. You can get away with it. And that's an, that's an even worse thing to do. So you know, never confess to a priest. Never. Like, you know, it's, it's an admittance to atheism. You're saying God doesn't know everything and that you're trusting a man instead of God in his place. And you're giving him a lot of power in doing that. One of the things they say in the lovely Christian music is um, every uh, tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. They, they, they didn't say like Herod or whoever it was took Jesus's orrery, or the, uh, the new orrery of the Israel. They didn't, exp um, they, they're not choosing his anti-prophet basically who might have been Rome. Well, although actually we, we did choose Rome, but somewhat through Paul, it's kind of okay. Um, but we confess, we're well, not confess, we uh, make the choice, we make the decision now, we make the righteousness and we say, Jesus is the Lord of that temple of his orrery. It's his star. It's his, if we believe in him, then we'll have the grace of that star and we'll have guardians, protections. And if we don't die completely, we might get another chance. It's, 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 you know, you don't need to know about it. Like, you know, it's the higher after what happens in life and death. Orreries are like this consolation prize where you kind of satirically get everything you kind of ever wanted. Everybody just thought it was the best thing in the world that orreries are things to fight over and people are like it's more important than life your orrery and I study Kabbalah very much I'm a very good Kabbal Kabbal <laughs> It's an oral tradition it's supposed to be an oral tradition like you know but I studied it it came by me more so than I came by it and it came by me for a reason and I can tell you that uh, the starry sky the starry night sky above us is a very low and mundane heaven it's an archetype as above so below and we have an archetypical glass roof which we're responsible for we're responsible for maintaining this this uh, heaven that's over us and it's just a war it's star wars they're fighting over it they want each other's names and stars and stuff and it's it's terrible and those horrible people that end up in those stars end up as bad light and they they're not the dead poet society anymore they're not nietzsche and uh, you know debussy and all these composers and authors that used to guide us and lead us they are cruel um crows they're businessmen they're rich kids and they're not guiding us they're resentful that they're dead and they're cruel and abusive and will persecute and torment you through my power through my place in this, on my place my rosary through my position in life because they took it from me and it's only going to get worse i don't want you to confess that i am a, it turns out that i'm lord i'm with lord i'm one with lord somebody once called me a don i was in a, a court and there was some american solicitor there and she looked at me and she goes he's a don I could hear her thoughts. Like, yeah, it's not that different to me. Um, but <laughs> and um, sorry, I'm just being attacked all the time. <laughs> so it's just funny when I'm being attacked while I'm talking to you. Um, so yeah, but if you kind of say that that hippie kid on that YouTube channel is his own star, is his own. Uh, that's, that'll help. You won't have to choose between me and Derek Rockefeller. Derek's already dead. He's in my orrery actually. Um. And turns out all of these people, I think, pass over every march now are going to start being slowly and eliminated and wiped out in a very uh, interesting scene because it's the last, it's the end of the game. It's, uh, you can't make the mistakes that you've made before anymore. But uh, yeah, you really are in a condition of oblivion. I can't believe no one in this country had so much of a gospel because, you know, they have kids running up to me just like in the gospels you see all these kids running up to jesus or kid, people spying on him from afar not talking to him like coming up to him saying hey jesus will you give us your blessing and like jesus is so krishna and somewhat naive you know in the krishna it's not naivety it's a, you know it's just a pure way of thinking and he's like oh if you don't exploit it of course i will and like oh we won't exploit it and he blesses them and they go off to pretend, and pretend to be kings or completely usurp his uh orrery and you know they claim to you know this you see it in um, Forrest Gump, everybody, he just passes by and throws like a teacher, have a nice day, they practically inherit a fortune, you know what I mean? And it's very easy to exploit me, and it's very easy to exploit my family, but that is the ultimate test of it, that if you do exploit me and my family, you're, that's it, it's apocalypse, and God will start destroying the world. And uh, you've already seen the four horses galloping along, um, you've seen plenty of trumpets, and... The only thing keeping is the interesting thing you see this is uh, you see lots of fire on the earth, but the Lord's not with them. You'll see lots of earthquakes and um, and uh, tsunami kind of things on the earth, but the Lord's not with them. You see great strong winds on the earth, but the Lord's not with them because you still hear one small voice. And when that one small voice goes, then the Lord is with 
the anger and wrath over fornication then the lord will be in your winds then the lord will be in your earthquakes and then you'll see the very explicit difference between the bells of the horns the horn period in revelations and the the um, bowls the bowls of wrath being poured out on the world are very very explicitly different and we see one of the bowls of wrath is actually uh, one of the like noah the noah the flood in, of noah you know we see um we see in Job, we see that he must have been responsible in some way for apocalypse. He must have been some sort of king up to that. Right? He was responsible for apocalypse because all of the wrath of God is poured out onto him. All of it, like, you know, he, he seems to witness or experience all these plagues specifically poured out onto him. So he must have been responsible for it. You see, Moses was in a time when he was oblivious and was 400 years into oblivion. And no one really knew who was responsible because no one was smart enough to know. The world was falling into perdition. But Moses figured it out and he went on to the Pharaoh and he said, you're responsible for this. And I do, I'm do. i doing that to the president, my president at the moment. I'm going to do it to the world. I officially do it right here. Everyone, presidents, politicians or anyone who's exploiting my family, my wife, French Foreign Legion, I don't know, any of you, gypsies, King of Spain or whatever. I'm letting you know now who's responsible for it. You know, and the putting that crux down on you, you'll see the plagues explicitly poured out onto you. Because it's not the scarlet women, it's not the people that have come by in my life, not the people that have been tricked by the serpent into exploiting me, particularly not my family. You know, <laughs> um, it's the people who aren't doing anything about it or coveting my wife or coveting my family and coveting my orrery. And I'm making that explicit that the world is suffering. COVID happened because of this. I swear to God, COVID happened because of this, because they were messing with all the stars. They had control of the stars because I'm the Lord of Lords, just the Lord of Stars, King of Stars kind of thing. It's not exactly, I'm not exactly the King of Stars. I'm just the oldest star that happens to be on the earth at, the face, at, the, at this moment in time. I'm the oldest one. So I'm not in myself anything super special. I just happen to be some super ancient soul or something that they say just fell from Briar. So it just happened to be the highest authority and they can mess with every star and orrery under that authority. So that's pretty much everyone. So that's why they can screw with everybody. They did a global cull a few years ago during the summer. Derek Rockefeller's mother thought it would be a great idea to cull every orrery or something on the face of the earth after they gave everyone an orrery and they took it away and everybody got sick. Everybody got sick like the aliens got sick in War of the Worlds when they got separated from their stars. They couldn't breathe and they died from immune failure. And I can tell you from people screwing on my orrery that it affects your immune system and affects your respiratory. Your respiratory you feel like you can't breathe. And people are dying from from orrery, from messing with people's orrery. So this entire apocalypse is killing millions of people. It's killing people. It's, it's a global situation. You know, I'm just one lab on a YouTube channel here sitting in my kitchen. It affects everybody. So these few people, these Rockefeller trash, these few gypsies, these Swiss bankers, all of you has a right to fucking kill them. You know what I mean? All of you have a right to team up and say, like, stop screwing with this one little, like, this one little family. Stop fucking persecuting because I am Israel, man. You know, that's the thing. I don't have any children, which is interesting. So I'm moving, like, from the period from Jacob back to Isaac, even, because I figured out a mystery of Isaac. And I'm not sure if there's a human connection between Abraham and Isaac. I think that might be more spiritual. Abraham kind of thing, but I'm not sure. But the more history that I understand and interpret and resolve, the more peace I bring to all those people who suffered apocalypse from that time. So Judaism at the moment in the Middle East are probably all celebrating and feeling very peaceful then because I solved their apocalypse. And yet by just respecting my family, and it will prevent apocalypse or not exploiting my family or hurting my family. Yet. And you know, like you've been, you know, you <laughs> you can try <laughs> uh, to be perfectly honest. But I just let you know that it's it says in Revelations that it's a very very heavily because so many people get their heads cut off, so many people get killed, murdered. Look at COVID for the sake of a few layabout gypsies rolling around in Babylon having sex with my uh, my scarlet wives and my friends and family in some amazing heaven. Like I've never been there. Like they were so so swift on cutting me off and disconnecting me from my orrery. Like I was in Adam Waterford, there was lots of miracles, lots of things happened, and it was a big scary event. I walked away slowly. I knew from modern day culture they would hunt down my family, so I went home to keep an eye on my family. And uh, I've been here forever, ever since a prophet at home, not supposed to be at home. Um, um, I should have lost track of that. Um, so yeah, they've just been hunting and stalking me ever since, just like Zebedee in the tree. And recruiting, like air, like the in the area that I am, is just it's a nightmare, man. To be honest, I just you know, um, but yeah. Anyway, the world's getting better slowly. The more I'm teaching, um, it's hard, very hard to be a Taoist 
I like to think of myself as a Taoist, very hard to be a Taoist in jihad. It's very, very difficult because, you know, patience doesn't always win out, you know what I mean? And uh, I just had to teach and teach and teach and keep teaching. And the more I taught, the more powerful they got and the more corrupt they got because you tell them one thing and they do the opposite of it just because you told them how to do it and they do the exact opposite. But I just kept teaching and teaching and teaching and I knew just eventually when all taught was educated that it would be good. I just, they'd have no reason they'd see it's in their self-interest and now you must see it as in the world's self-interest that a few people are exploiting my family, persecuting my family and if it goes on then the entire world is going to collapse. Your chronology has already failed. It's going to be a famine period and they're destroying all of your nations and all everything. So now that you know about it, anybody, and um, politicians in particular, more authority or responsibility you have in life or if you're already connected with it, then I would just like to focus all of... Um, to play all of my wrath, all of the wrath of the fornification of my friends and family and my wife onto the people who deserve it and onto people who have it coming because a lot of innocent people are suffering and I'm doing that as Moses, I'm laying it down baby you know who you are let my family let these people go, let them alone if you can't be nice and don't be at all it's either perdition or be nice if you can't be nice don't be so yep and with the authority of Elijah on the mission of Moses. Um, looking forward to the future, looking forward to being all of your friends because when you are my friend, it's a big, it's much better. It's almost like Monsters Inc. Like they tortured and they persecuted and they hunted them, but then they figured out, oh, you actually just treat them well and treat them respectfully. And it's a, it's a massive blessing. It's the eternal day, and that's what we've had under Christianity. And if you'd like to see more of the eternal day, and no uh, Arm Ar Armageddon and no uh, apocalypse, then um, you know, just uh, kind of say he is, is the Lord of His Ori, He's the name of His Ori. I don't really want to be something like that. And Rockefeller trash, a Rockefeller trash, and Gypsy royalty or Gypsy royalty. And the uh, gypsy pope has a gypsy chance of gypsy redemption if Potiphar shows up on my doorstep and apologises. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to being a positive influence on the world. Positive thing. And this is a half hour video, so I'm going to go now. But uh, thank you very much for your time. Patience. This has been my tutelage.